cannot complain too much about a teeny tiny book called I cannot keep my eyes nine hours. I don't know what it says about me. I love that. If I prepare myself, I should be fine. I don't even know what to say. Hi guys, welcome welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, hi, my name is Vivian. And today in this video, we're gonna do the random number generator picks how many hours I read for the week. And I am excited to do this because I've seen Destiny do this and I know that she's the one who started doing this video. So all credits go to her. I thought it'll be exciting to do this because I just think that it's going to be so fun to see how many hours I read every single day for a week. And yeah, I really want to read this week and so I feel like this is going to help me with my reading. Today is Monday and it's a little bit late actually. It is 12.30 p.m. currently so I am a little bit terrified of what number I'm gonna get for today. I'm hoping for a lesser number like six hours and less would be great but obviously we don't know that. I found this little random wheel generator online and also today I am planning to do just one to ten hours because I feel like I won't be able to reach 12 hours if I end up getting 12 hours because it's currently 12 30 p.m. but we'll start doing 1 to 12 hours tomorrow. I don't know how good this site is so we're just gonna use it and see how it goes. So let's just spin it. I think I can do four hours today so that's a really good start. I am really really terrified. I was actually really scared that I would get like eight or nine hours so this is good. Four hours is great and I don't have any books I'm in the middle of so we're gonna pick a book together and I actually have a little bit of decision fatigue right now so I don't really want to make any decisions. We're gonna get a little bit of help with picking the books right now. Let's go to my TBR cart that's right behind me. This is my cart. You guys can't see the entirety of it. I have more books down here. I recently did a book haul. I have so many new books. I'm gonna use the TBR jar to help with this. I should read the books that are on my TBR which are these two. And then I have Spinning Silver that I'm in the middle of at the back here. But I am not currently feeling like reading Crescent City series. And I don't really like what I'm reading in the middle of right now. So I want to pick a new book. Title starts with Initial of the Month. That means since we're in the month of September, the title has starts with an S. Oh, gosh. Spinning silver. <laughs> I want to read Serpent and Dove because I am planning to read that in a different video. I guess we're gonna read Spinning Silver. I'm gonna try my best to actually get through this. I read this in a video, 24 hour readathon, I think, and I didn't continue reading this because it was a little bit boring, and I'm currently at page 128. Naomi Novik's writing is just very, very descriptive, more descriptive than narrative, so I had a hard time kind of getting through this. I guess I will continue reading this and just try my best to get through it. If I don't really like it, then I'll DNF it, but for now, we'll try to get through Spinning Silver. silver and I'm here to tell you guys that I'm not going to continue reading this book. First of all, it was really descriptive and there are some parts of the book where I feel like there don't need to be that descriptive with the setting. Second of all, there are multiple POVs in this and the one ick I have with books is that if there are too many POVs and if the POV is not needed, I just don't find myself being interested in the book. Third of all, the multiple POVs it's very hard to understand. This book is written in first person and she doesn't specify which POV you're in. It just switches on its own every time there's a page break or a chapter change. It's really hard to read and I just, I can't focus. I can't keep my attention with the book. So I'm just going to stop reading this. I've had this thought for the past hour and I just don't want to continue. So I'm not gonna fully DNF the book. I don't know if maybe it's just my mood right now. I know I liked it, but maybe it's just not my cup of tea. And I don't mind the lack of romance in fantasy books or in books in general, but if the characters are not interesting enough for me to continue, 
I'm not gonna continue. I picked up another book, some of them marked by SM Geither. Interested in reading this, so I'm gonna start this right now. fantasy plot so I am flying through a book and that is why I've been reading this non-stop from just now. It's currently 10 30 p.m so I'm going to go to bed now because I am exhausted. Oh and before I forget this book basically follows a mercenary called Cassia Greythorn and she really doesn't care much about her life other than to finish up her job and also to earn as much money as possible to buy medicine for her sick mentor. But one day a job went awry and she ends up getting captured by the king and the king offers her to investigate a certain plague that's ruining the country and in return he's going to reward her with something that she really really wants. But honestly after 190 pages I have yet to reach that point at which the king offers her that little reward i'm not really too sure i am not halfway through this book is 50 50 500 plus pages but still i thought that i would have gone to whatever the summary has said but i'm only like at the first paragraph so far my thoughts are pretty stagnant about the book i don't really feel too much about it but i don't feel like it's a very boring book as well so i'll probably start the random number generator tomorrow morning as soon as i wake up so that i can get some reading done in the morning so i'll see you guys tomorrow in the morning good morning it is the next morning and we're going to be running the random number generator i am using a different website because the one that i used before this did not go over 10 the number 10 so i'm using a different one and we're going to run it right now let us hope that i don't go over 10 hours Oh, I am going to take this. I got four hours. It's pretty busy and I'm happy that I got four. So let us read for four hours. I just finished reading Song of the Marked. My timer is on 40 minutes left and it is currently 9.47 p.m. So I'm very close to 10 p.m. I'm going to push through and finish my 40 minutes after I film this clip, but I'm done with this book. I read like 300 pages of this book today and I'm very happy that I finished it. It's very hard to say what my thoughts are about this book. Essentially, I like the plot because I find that I like fantasy plots that centers around gods and in this book the gods play a big role if you guys flip to like the front few pages where there's some the maps there is like this hierarchy of gods and it really plays a role in this book and i also really enjoy the pictures in this book there's like a photo of the main female character and if you guys go to the back of the book there's also a picture of the male main character world building is also i think pretty interesting but there are a lot of very cliche tropes in this and I feel like I kind of guessed every single 
plot twist that appeared in this book. I guessed the little cliffhanger that happened at the end, which because I guessed it, I didn't really feel like it was a cliffhanger. The prose just didn't give me a lot of emotions. It didn't give me the love that I would feel with fantasy characters usually, but I didn't get bored with the book which is really, really good. I think the reading process flowed really well as well, so I cannot complain too much about it. Fantasy books, you tend to have a lot of plot holes if you're not good with the world building, but I think this is pretty solid. It is great, but it's not like an extremely amazing fantasy book. I would continue reading the whole series, obviously, because I bought the books, but also this is not bad of a first book. I'm interested to see what the story is going to go in the other books. So I think I'm going to give this 3.5. My current rating is 3.5. I'm not really too sure if it's going to go down or go up. I think 3.5 is a pretty solid rating for me. That is The Song of the Marked by SM Geither. I want to pick another kind of easy to read book and I think I'm going to pick The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I really want to read that book and I've heard that it's really easy to read and I flip through the pages and it's like really big writing. I feel like four hours, at least for me, is pretty easy to go through. I even took a nap. I took like a three hour nap today so I am very happy with my four hour reading today. I'm going to pick The Naturals and we're going to go from there. <laughs> I got done with my timer and I'm currently at page 86 of The Naturals. It took me 40 minutes to read 86 pages, but the writing is really big, so that's why it took me really, really fast to read that many pages. Anyway, I am going to probably continue reading this regardless of the time. Sorry, that was my dog snoring. So far, I'm really freaking enjoying the book. I love the short chapters. I love how like you really get to know the character because you're in her POV. And if you guys don't know what The Naturals is about, it's about a group of teenagers who are recruited by the FBI because they are natural at crime investigation like profiling or reading emotions, all of those things. If you guys watch like crime-esque shows, you'll understand what I'm talking about, but I'm having a lot of fun so I don't really want to stop reading this book. So yeah, that is it for this update. I will see you guys in the morning for my next random number generator. The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I've been wanting to read one of TJ Klune's books. It is one of his most popular books, so I decided to get this one. I don't exactly know what it's about. The main character is sent to go to this house that has extraordinary young kids, something like that. I'm not entirely too sure. And then I also got These Infinite Threads by... Tara Moffey. The story behind this purchase is that I did my birthday book haul two months ago, I think, and in that book haul, I did purchase this book, but I ended up buying a different size than this Woven Kingdom. It was like a different publisher, it was a different size, and for like two months, I didn't want to read this Woven Kingdom because of that. And then I went to the bookstore and I saw the same publisher with this Woven Kingdom, and I immediately grabbed it. And I am so happy because I compared it and it was the same size. So yeah, now I can actually get into this Woven Kingdom. And for my extra copies of both this Woven Kingdom and these event threads, I am going to either give them away or sell them. It was really, really painful to see those two different sizes. So I got the same size and I'm very happy because actually this is really pretty. It's kind of iridescent like and there is some embossing on the cover so 
I'm happy about this. Enough of my little book haul. I'm gonna give you guys an update on my time. It's actually currently almost 2 p.m. Time-wise, I am at two hours and 47 minutes. And then I'm still on the natural switch of Berlin Barnes, but I'm almost done with this. I'm at page 248. So thoughts about this book first of all it's amazingly written once again jennifer lynn barnes writing i just absolutely love and adore second of all the chapters are really short so it's really really fast and really easy to read and also the writing is really big so it's really fast to read this book third of all this is so much creepier and scarier than i expected it to be i am easily creeped out by a lot of things and this is the reason why i don't read mystery and thriller a lot but this book i thought a ya mystery wouldn't be too bad but it's actually kind of creepy it's so good though i really like the creepy vibes and i really like the writing i love that we get another love triangle in this because in the inheritance games you get a love triangle and in this one you get another love triangle and i already know who i like i'm hoping that obviously she ends up with him you know i don't care because honestly i like both guys but i do favor one than the other we're all really enjoying the book really loving the writing i just really like how fast i'm reading this book also really like how how much i want to continue reading the book so i'm gonna continue this once we're done with the book i'll get back with you guys and we'll pick another book and i'm so excited to get this done this will probably take me 30 minutes to get done pretty sure um and i don't know if i want to jump into the next book immediately because this book is so good you guys it's like really really good i'm gonna quickly finish this and then i'll update you guys once i'm done my timer is on two hours and 11 minutes and i am officially done with the naturals by jennifer lynn barnes i did not expect that ending the plot twist or like the mystery in the book I did not expect that kind of ending, so I was thoroughly surprised. I really enjoyed how surprised I was with this book. I don't even know what I want to rate this because it's definitely high up there, maybe like a 4.5. I really, really did enjoy it. I just felt like it is the first of a series, so I felt like I lacked a little bit of connection with all of the characters in this book, which is why I'm either going for a 4.5 or a 4 star, but writing is absolutely amazing and obviously pacing is amazing and I really like the storyline. I had so much fun. <laughs> Are we gonna get into this? We might. We might be getting into this. I have Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson on here. I just really want to get into it. I want to get a Brandon Sanderson book done. And this is a standalone. So I was thinking that this would be the best book to get into when I want to read Brandon Sanderson. If it's gonna be too heavy, I will have a romance ready next to me. But yeah, I think I'm gonna read Warbreaker. I'm gonna take a quick break and edit my videos first and then we'll get into Warbreaker. Backstory before I get into the topic of this clip. Basically, I woke up really, really early this morning. I woke up at like 7 in the morning. And I don't usually wake up at 7. I usually wake up at 8 or 8.30. But it's because I usually go to sleep at like 12 midnight. Yesterday, I took a nap. I think I mentioned somewhere in one of those clips that I took a nap. And I took a really, really long nap. And so yesterday night, I couldn't fall asleep. And it was really difficult. I think I fell asleep at like 2 a.m. So I'm lacking sleep today. And I wanted to take a nap. But I had coffee because I know I was going to be sleepy. And I cannot fall asleep because the coffee is keeping me awake. But my brain is like short-circuiting right now. And so I'm in between sleep and awake. 
I'm in a limbo right now. Reading this is a little bit confusing considering how I've been reading page 5 for like 2 minutes and I realized that nothing is going inside my head. Once again, nothing wrong with this book. Just if you go inside a new fantasy world, you'll know that it takes a while to really get into the world and there's gonna be a lot of descriptions and explanations of how the world works and I understand but my mental capacity right now because of how exhausted I am is not working. I want like a no-brainer romance book so I picked up a trashy romance book and that is things I wanted to say but never did by Monica Murphy. I have heard a lot of mixed reviews on this book and the only reason why I'm gonna go into it right now is because I just wanna get it over with and I am gonna have my own opinions on it. It is a very thick book. It's 600 pages for a romance. I don't know what to expect. I know some people have said that this is just pure spice, pure smut, nothing else. Some people have said that this is bully romance. I think going to this, I need to be aware of the fact that this is not a normal romance book so i'm not going to have too high hopes i'm not going to go into this expecting a pure and lovely romance book i'm going into this expecting a bully romance and to see just some degrading stuff going on i just feel like it's gonna be no-brainer romance i think at least it's gonna be no-brainer if this ends up being really really tough to get into obviously i won't continue but i think if i prepare myself i should be fine i should be fine and we're gonna get into it. Things I wanted to say. This book is thick, you guys. I don't know, but we're gonna get into it. I did not give an update yesterday night, but I did finish my four hours and I'm on things I wanted to say but never did. And I read them until page 196. I am at chapter 16. So I did read a lot of this book. I just didn't give an update because I was a little bit sick yesterday night. I had some bowel problems, so I went to sleep really early. But I am going to do the random number generator for today. There you go. I am so scared because I actually don't have a lot of time to read today. I have to edit a video and get it uploaded today. So. No way. Nine hours? I knew I was getting lucky. I knew I was getting lucky in this video because it was four hours for three days straight and I got a nine hour one today. It's currently 9.30 a.m. What time will that be? 6 p.m.? I'm gonna try to make it work. I don't know. Nine hours is a lot, you guys. Let's just hope that we don't fail. Today's challenge, I'm gonna immediately get to reading. I'm going to be going out today, so that's why I am a little bit terrified i'm not going to end up getting this done uh and i need to edit a video but it's fine it's okay we're gonna try and make it work i am going to read this book i'm gonna finish this i have like 400 pages left 400 plus pages this is 650 pages long you guys so i am going to get this done also this book if you guys go into this book without much expectations of it being like a basic romance novel and or a healthy relationship then i think that it's fine i wouldn't say it's like a typical relationship dynamic but i don't think it's that bad honestly i flew through the 200 pages so we're gonna continue reading this and i need to get started on my nine hours so let's get to getting this done Things I Wanted to Say But Never Did by Monica Murphy. On the timer, I have 3 hours and 57 minutes. So I've read for 5 freaking hours. I finished 
this book. I remember I started at like page 190 or something this morning and I read up until 650 so I basically read 450 pages in five hours. My brain is all muddled up right now, I'm not going to lie. That is a lot of reading. Currently 5 p.m., almost 5 p.m. and I still have four hours. I don't even know how that's going to happen. I don't even know if that's even possible to finish, but I finished things I wanted to see but never did. Final thoughts about this book, I don't know how to think because <laughs> I'm not going to lie, the main characters are definitely 100% not likable and they definitely are deranged and a little bit not right in their mind. The female character is just very stupid. I don't know why she does what she does. Her actions I cannot justify. And the male main character, he is just borderline an asshole and I don't know why she even likes him, probably because he's hot, but that's about it. And it's like all of a sudden at the latter half of the book, they just like are obsessed with each other. They fall in love. They're absolutely obsessed with each other. And I think this book is just, it feels like a soap opera. And overall, everybody is just stupid and reckless and have issues. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I like how Wit, who is the main lead character, by the way, I like how Wit kind of became a different person by the end of the book and different as in not a total 180 change but more of he realized that he actually loves Summer but I think because the story kind of reads like a soap opera it really reads really fast I don't know what to read this it's either a 2.5 or a 3 I'm leaning towards a 2.5 to be honest I actually do think that Monica Murphy's writing is pretty good it says a lot for me to like fly through this book even though the characters are just honestly outrageous that says a lot about someone's writing because I usually like character driven books and this one is just borderline. No character growth at all. I unfortunately did enjoy the book. I don't know what it says about me but I did enjoy the book. As it for things I wanted to say but never did, for the rest of the four hours I'm either gonna grab a Kindle book or I'm gonna try my best to read Warbreaker even though right now the idea of reading Warbreaker after reading five hours of that book just kind of feels a little bit too much. I'm leaning towards a Kindle book though because it's just easier for me to bring around. I'm eating dinner and stuff. I can just like get a little bit of reading done while I'm eating and that really helps. But I don't really know what Kindle book I want to read. Should I go into A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime? Or I read Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score. That's the last book in the Knockabout series. I have the physical book, but I also have it on Kindle. I am here to give another update because I feel like I need to talk about it because it's really hard to solidify the meaning of the book if I don't talk about it. So I'm gonna talk about it since I'm currently really muddled. I ended up reading Warbreaker, by the way. I did end up reading Things We Left Behind. I'm now at page 50 and my timer's at three hours and 10 minutes. What I want to kind of talk about is the world building in this. I didn't explain what Warbreaker is, but basically, this world there's this essence in this world that's called breath and an individual basically has one breath each and you can either add breath to you or give your breath away and the more breath you have the more you view the world in vivid colors and you'll have perfect pitch all of that and the less breath you have the more you view the world dull in dull colors you follow a lot of characters in here but from what I have learned. Basically, the more breath you have, the more stronger you are. And there are these things called the heightenings at which the more breath you have, the more you can go up in your heightening. So there's a first heightening, the second heightening, and the third heightening. And when you have reached the third heightening, you can view the world in perfect hues. There are also these things called the returned, the lifeless, the drab, and with the return, you have basically reached the fifth heightening and you pass away and you are returned back to your body because you probably died doing something honorable. The lifeless are basically mortals who have died and are revived back to life, but they're not like returned because they didn't become gods. And lastly, the drabs are basically individuals who have zero breath in them. You can only get breath from people if they give it to you willingly. You cannot kill someone and get their breath. They have to give it to you willingly. And if they have like, for example, 10 breaths in them and they give you their breath, they give you all 10. Yeah, that's the world of Warbreaker. And I'm kind of trying to make it all make sense in my head. So that's why I'm talking about it. But I'm gonna continue reading this because it's starting to get interesting and we're following a lot of character point of views, but I think they're all pretty fun. 
and I am intrigued with the story. So that's what I'm going to do. Update on my reading because I'm actually going to be switching books. But I was on Warbreaker and I read up until page 116 and I decided that I'm not going to be reading this first. It's a world that has a lot of characters and a lot of world building involved and my head is currently really muddled right now. So I jumped into Things We Left Behind again. Currently on my timer I have two hours and two minutes left. It is 10 p.m. so it'll take me until midnight to get this done. I am exhausted. Good for me, I guess. But yeah, I'm gonna push through today. I'm gonna get through the two hours and I'll be reading things we left behind. I'm now at page 10 of this book, by the way. Good morning, it is the next day, happy Friday. And I am going to be doing the random number generator for morning. I'm so exhausted from reading yesterday. I'm hoping for at least lesser than nine hours. I think I'm just gonna take that as a win. Let's record this and then we can roll the wheel. I'm scared. Oh my, god, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, yes! <laughs> Y'all, I was so scared I was gonna fall at 12, but this wheel pulled through last minute. <laughs> the amount of fear that I had when I went to 12. Uh, we have one hour today, that's insane, that's so good. I have so much work to do today, so that is such a good, good number. I'm gonna probably finish it this morning, so let us start our one hour. says there are some things we never get over some things we hide from the light and i thought that was really really cute because those are the titles of the first two books of the series i loved it that was so good i finished my one hour today which is great it is currently 3 p.m it's almost 3 30 p.m i did start reading pretty late because i had to finish off my work this morning and i really liked that i got it done before 5 p.m so i felt very productive and i am so glad that i had one hour today because i didn't feel like i was forced to read in a sense like i read because i was done with work and i was relaxing and i wanted to read while i relaxed i started today off from chapter 9 i think which is page 118 and i am currently at page 194 which means i read around 70 plus pages if I'm correct, I did not talk about this book, I apologize, but this is a part of the Knock em Out Small Town series written by Lucy Score. I wouldn't say they're interconnected standalones because you actually have to read the first book to really get a gist of the plot of the second book and the third book, which is Things We Left Behind, because there's like an underlying mystery plot with this whole series so I do recommend reading from the first and with things we left behind this is about Lucian and Sloan and semi second chance romance I think I think they had a past the thing about this book is that I saw glimpses of Lucian and Sloan's relationship from the first and the second book it made me so excited to read this book I just loved the tension between them I love the the chemistry the banter between them it's so good this is a pretty thick book for a romance but Lucy Score does write really really thick books 581 pages I am going to go and quickly do more work stuff and then I'll probably read 
again tonight even though I am done with my one hour but I'll probably get some reading done I might go into Warbreaker I feel like without a time constraint I can read that book without feeling like I'm forced to read the book I might go into Warbreaker and then I'll read this tomorrow because it is on Kindle Unlimited and tomorrow is Saturday and I usually don't read a lot on the weekends so Saturday and Sunday is going to be a little bit difficult we're going to make it work I'm going to try my best that is it for today I will see you guys tomorrow it's currently 11 a.m. and I went indoor cycling this morning I came back I took a shower I'm going to go out soon but I want to quickly know how many hours I'm going to read today I'm going to spin the wheel I'm hoping below five hours let's just hope and pray oh okay um below five hours i got four again i feel like i feel like the lucky number in this video is four but i'm gonna accept that four hours i'm gonna try my best to finish my four hours i'm gonna read on my kindle most of the time and hopefully i'll have time to read when i come back and I'll be reading Things Were Left Behind. I stopped at page 194. I will see you guys when I see ya because I will be busy today. I'm gonna get my hair cut and then I'm so excited to get my hair cut because I really, really don't like my hair this long. I usually have a, like a bob. It's the next morning, but I have to say and be honest. It's actually Monday today. Yesterday was Sunday I decided I wasn't gonna film that Sunday because I had a lot of things to do that day And also I fell sick yesterday So I decided in the morning that I wasn't going to do the last day on Sunday and just take the Monday the next week So here I am with a very very nasally voice because I now have the flu. That's what we're working with um, We're gonna spin the wheel and then we'll talk about the book that I read on Saturday. I did finish my time, I just didn't film much that day because I was out a lot and it was just really difficult to film. It just was very, very hectic. But let us get on with the wheel spinning today. It's also really, really hot. I also realized that you can shuffle the numbers on the wheel, so I shuffled it, which is why it looks a little bit different. But let us just get to spinning this. It's currently 12 p.m. So I am not able to read a lot today, actually. I've got work to do. <laughs> Just my luck, honestly. <laughs> I got eight hours. I don't even know what to say. Eight hours it is. So, eight hours. And also, the book that I read on Saturday is Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score. I am done with the book. Um, the bookmark is on here because I read the last like 40 pages on my kindle so i'm done with the book i have yet to read this bonus epilogue scene but the rest i finished and read i really like this book i love lucian and sloan's story i just love their second chance romance story and i really like the fact that even though this is a thick book it's 580 pages i did not feel bored with the book at all i wanted to read it i wanted to know what's gonna happen and that mystery subplot really saved this book and I had so much fun. I love the Nox and Naomi and Nash and Lena scenes. They're so, so good. I love the friendship. I love the romance. The banter is amazing. The comedic factors are amazing. I just feel like Lucy Score has done such a good job with this book. That said, I don't know if I want to rate this 4.5 or 5. I think I want to give it a bit of time to think about it. I was reading Warbreaker, but I think I'm gonna read the second book in the Natural series, which is called Killer Instinct. I feel like that one would be an easy read because it's fast and quick. I also want to know the rest of the mystery subplot with the Natural series because we don't end off in a cliffhanger, but there's still this unresolved case in regards to the main character's storyline, so I think that will be fun. Pretty sure with eight hours I can read more than just one book. I'm gonna quickly get started on reading because eight hours and it's currently 12 p.m. So I'm determined to finish this vlog with a win. Let's get started to reading. I 
am halfway through Killer Instinct, chapter 25, page 190. Time is at 5 hours and 53 minutes. I'm not gonna talk too much. I sound really nasally and I know it sounds kind of disgusting and annoying. So we're not gonna talk too much. I just wanna give a midway update on the time. So far with Killer Instinct, you get to see a lot more about the characters to which I really enjoy that because I feel like with the first book, I didn't feel much for the characters. There are five teens in this book, by the way. And to be frank, I don't like Leah. Whatever she's going through, she's kind of projecting it to the other members of her team. and I. I don't like that. I am most curious about Sloane because I feel like her upbringing is a lot different than the other people in this book. I have my guesses on the mystery that's going on with this book and I'm hoping that I'm correct but I might be wrong. I'm excited to continue this so that's what I'm going to do and I'll just come back and update you guys when I'm done with the book. My timer is on 3 hours and 48 minutes left. I finished Killer Instinct. Mystery wise, I feel like the first book is a lot better. This one, I actually guessed the culprit to the mystery case in here. But what I really liked in this book is that the character development we get in here is really, really good. And you get a lot of backstory with the characters. You get to know them, get to know why they're like this. So I really liked this book because of that. I think I'm gonna give this four stars. Even though the mystery plot's not good, I really liked knowing the characters in this book and I really really enjoyed reading it. I had fun! So Killer Instinct is four stars. I am going to pick up my next book. I'm in a dilemma. I'm gonna take my time to pick my next book. I will let you guys know when I pick my next book. So I finished my timer for today, I finished my eight hours, and I was reading Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I wanted to get this read before I watched the movie that just came out in Prime Video. This is my first MM couple book I'm pretty sure that I've read, and so it's kind of like a new world to me, but I'm having a lot of fun with the book. I would say this has a little bit of spice, but it's not super descriptive. Like, you know what's going on, but they don't go into deep details. Right now I'm at page 260. More than halfway through the book, I have 150 pages left to the end. What I would say is that this is for sure not a slow burn. The relationship starts really really early on in the book, but what I really enjoy about the relationship between the two is that Alex is really understanding, not just about Henry's well-being, but also about his sisters and I find that just really green flag of Alex to do. So I'm having a lot of fun with the book. I think however the politics part of this book is a little bit boring. That plot always loses me and I don't know how to understand it. And also my dog is snoring, I apologize. Anyway, I am going to go now and I'll give you guys a quick final recap later on because right now I am exhausted and I don't know why but today's eight hours was a little bit more painful than the nine hours I did for this video so I'm just glad it's done and over with. It's currently 11 30 right now and I'm actually glad that it didn't hit 12 because my goal is to sleep before 12. I'm gonna go to bed. I'm exhausted and I'll see you guys when I end this vlog. Hi, I know you guys see a little bit of difference. I did dye my hair dark. I'm not blonde anymore. I'm filming this outro two weeks after I filmed this video because I actually went into a reading slump. I only read one book and I've been reading so slow. I've never been in this situation like this before. So I'm 
a little bit out of place right now. I took a little bit of a break, essentially. But I wanted to quickly pop in here and give my thoughts on all the books that I read in this vlog. I read a total of eight books. I didn't finish all the eight books, but I still read a lot of books. I finished six books. I read eight books and I finished six. One was a DNF and one I just did not continue, but I will be going into that book pretty, pretty soon when I'm out of this reading slump. I'm currently editing this video and it's really, really long and I apologize. I'll quickly pop in here to talk about the books and then I'm gonna end this vlog. First book I read is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. Essentially, it was a DNF. I didn't like the writing in the book. I didn't enjoy the characters. I just felt like it wasn't the book for me. And then I read The Song of the Marked by SM Either. This is the first book in the Shadows and Crowns series and I gave this 3.5 stars. It was a good first book to start off a series and I really enjoyed the characters. I just felt like the writing wasn't as beautiful as I would expect a fantasy book to be so it was an easy read but it didn't wow me but I really liked the world building. And then I read The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is a YA mystery book and this is the first book of the Natural series. I rated this four stars. Great mystery plot, but I didn't really connect with the characters, but I could understand why because it is the first book of a series. Then I read Brandon Sanderson's Warbreaker. I did not continue this, but I will be reading this because I did read a bit more ever since I stopped reading it in this challenge. I'm not page 178, so I read quite a bit. We'll be continuing it. Storyline is great. Then I read Things I Wanted to Say But Never Did by Monica Murphy. 2.5 stars. Characters were problematic. I really like the writing which is why I give it 2.5 but in general the characters need help. And then I read Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score. I rated it four stars in the vlog but I decided to give it 4.5 because overall I just love this book and maybe giggle so much and I smiled a lot while I was reading this book and I love Nox and Naomi's edition in it. I love Nash and Leah. I just enjoyed this book so I gave it 4.5. Then I read Killer Instinct by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the second book of the Naturals series and I gave this four stars. Mystery plot was lacking but I like the character development in this so that's why it is four. And the last book I read in this vlog is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I did not finish reading it in the vlog because I finished the timer when I did finish the book. I rated this four stars. Love the romance. I just felt like it was not slow burn enough for me and I also really felt like the politics is sometimes boring me out. So in general, I love the romance but four stars. That is it for all the books I read in this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I put so much effort in this. It made me go into a reading slump so I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and I hope you guys have a good day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!